I've been preaching through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount for a while now, uh, looking at Matthew's chap- Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. These are the key precepts of Jesus' message, revealing his core values to his followers. My sermons for the last three weeks have been kind of challenging, as, as Jesus has really had some, some stern words for us to hear. Uh, I'd rather preach some cheerful sermons, but this is the message that Christ had for us to hear. The text have been um, verses 13 and 14 of chapter 7, where he revealed that the highway to hell is broad, and a lot of people are walking that path, but the path to eternal life is very narrow, and only a few ever find it. Something that gives us pause to think, are we one of the, the many who are on the highway to hell, or one of the few who are walking the path to eternal life. Last week, I preached about telling true prophets from false prophets based on their fruit. Uh, are they producing good fruit? Because a good tree, a good prophet, produces good fruit. And, and we are all called to bear the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. And are we doing that? And my message today is challenging as well, maybe even disturbing as we listen to Christ's words from Matthew chapter 7 and today verses 21 through 23. Here's what he says. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name. And perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In these three verses, Jesus warns about a terrible reality many people will face on judgment day. He will say, he says, many people who thought... They were following Jesus and going to heaven will be shocked to find out Jesus never knew them and they are turned away from heaven. And it's disturbing because it makes us ask the question, am I one of those who will be horrified to find that Jesus never knew me? Will I be one of the unfortunate souls turned away when Jesus says, get away from me, you who break God's laws? And it brings back to mind again the concerns raised in the 13th and 14th chapter. The gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. The message of Christ is very serious. We need to take it seriously. Many people just want to dabble in religion as if it was an afterthought. I'll go to church if I feel like it. I'll pray when I think about it. I'll read the Bible maybe, sometimes, maybe never. And this is the most important thing in our existence. It is literally determining whether or not we spend eternity with God in heaven or in hell, eternally separated from him. Jesus warns, one of the claims of the damned will be on judgment day, we prophesied in your name. In other words, they said all the right things. Maybe they even spoke on behalf of the Lord, sharing his word with others. Others will be damned as they claim, but we, but, we, but we cast out demons in your name. We did miracles in your name. And these two will be cast into hell. Why? Jesus gives answer, the answer in simple terms. I never knew you. Entrance, in, entrance into the kingdom of heaven starts with a real relationship 
a relationship with Jesus. It's not about what you know, but who you know. Jesus left the glory of heaven to come to our broken world to be with us, to have a relationship with us. It's one of the definitions of his name that we sing about at Christmas time. One of his names, Emmanuel, God with us. And as he came to be with us, he did ministry with 12 disciples. Now, he could have done it all alone. He is God. He doesn't need our help. But Jesus chose to work with 12 people. He wanted them to be part of this movement. He wanted a relationship with these men. And furthermore, as he worked, Jesus ate with sinners and prostitutes and tax collectors and other notorious sinners, interacting and building relationships with people, getting to know them. Because the relationship is the most important thing to Jesus. That's how he knows people. And that's how we know him. And that's what he wants with us too. A relationship. To know us and for us to know him. It's what God has always wanted. From the very beginning when he created people. A relationship. And since he wanted a relationship, he had to give us a choice to either engage in that relationship or to selfishly turn away from it. And so often, we selfishly turn away and we chase after something else that we want, our own selfish ambitions. And so Jesus came to the earth to call us back. He invites us back. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. That's what Jesus wants with you. A relationship where you talk every day and you walk together and you eat together and you live together and you serve together and you laugh and cry together. That's what Jesus wants with you. And part of that relationship may include prophesying in his name or casting out miracles or or, or, or casting out demons or doing miracles. But it's the relationship that's what's really important. Because sometimes the relationship may mean sitting with someone who's sick or doing something that you might not otherwise have thought you would do. Stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's the relationship that matters. It starts with a choice. Jesus wants a relationship with everyone. Some might think that, well, he doesn't really want a relationship with me. Maybe you feel like you're not good enough or you've done something terrible. Jesus wouldn't want to be around you. Jesus wouldn't really be interested in me. But Jesus showed that he is interested in everyone, and he loves everyone. He never shied away from anyone, no matter how bad they'd sinned or what they had done or how they were handicapped or whether they were old or whether they were young or whether they were children. Everyone, rich, poor, sinners, saints, Jesus loved them all, and he still does today. There's nothing you have done or ever could do that could keep Jesus from wanting a personal relationship with you. And he stands at the door of your heart and knocks, but you have to open the door and let him in. Once Jesus comes into your heart, you've got to walk with him every day. Are you spending time with him in a real way? personal relationship. How do we do that? Through prayer, through through the word of God. These are the, the heart of what it means to have a relationship as we talk to him daily and as we read his word and listen to him speaking to us. Not just alone, but in a group of other believers 
Because remember, Jesus didn't come for people just individually. He came and he gathered together a group of people, 12 disciples, and they, they worked together and partnered together and walked together. And that's what we're called to do as well. The other key part of Jesus' warning in his statement in verse, is in verse 21. He says, only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. And this statement connects all of the lessons that we've studied from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, as well as all of Jesus' teachings in the Gospels and through his servants in the Bible. Jesus tells us in the Bible how we are to live. These are his teachings. This Bible is the will of God in heaven. Are we living it? Good news is that God is gracious. He understands that we struggle. He understands that we misunderstand, that we may read one thing in the Bible and totally misunderstand, totally misunderstand what God means by it and what Jesus wants us to do. We may do the wrong thing, but most people aren't even reading it to figure it out. They're not even trying. Do you think willfully ignoring Jesus' teachings and the scriptures is doing the will of God? Of course not. It's no wonder there will be so many on Judgment Day crying, Lord, Lord, and Jesus will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Something else important needs to be said. It's this. Walking with Jesus and doing God's will go together. You really can't separate them. You would think prophesying and casting out demons and doing miracles in Jesus' name must be doing God's will, right? I mean, those are spiritual things. I mean, that's miraculous to be able to cast out a demon. That's pretty impressive. And yet Jesus said many will tell him that they did these very things and in his name, and he will reply, you, I never knew you. How is that? Maybe it's because Jesus didn't tell them to do those things. You see, walking with Jesus means staying in tune with him daily, listening to his instructions, knowing what he's calling you to do. If he calls you to prophesy, you prophesy. If he doesn't, then you don't. If he tells you to cast out demons, you cast them out. If he doesn't, you don't. If he tells you to do a miracle, you do it. If he doesn't, you don't. But whatever he tells you to do, you do. And if you are walking with the Lord and you're developing an intimate relationship with Him, you begin to become in tune with His Holy Spirit that leads you and tells you what to do. Everything that Jesus wants you to do, you know because the Spirit is revealing it to you. You see, this is why you can't just casually dabble in religion. You've got to walk closely with the Lord. A true relationship with Jesus leads you to live for him and to know him as the Holy Spirit directs us exactly how to obey Jesus. And the Spirit speaks to us if we're listening. Are you listening? Jesus' words are unsettling to us today in his Sermon on the Mount. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. It's troubling. It's unsettling. But that's good. Because maybe it will motivate us 
to take our relationship with Christ seriously. Let me conclude with a summary of some practical things you can do to ensure you're traveling on the pathway to eternal life and not blindly following the highway to hell. First and foremost, ask Jesus to save you. Start there. Decide that you want to follow him and start walking with him. Invite him to lead you. And then start walking with him. Number two, pray and read your Bible. These are the heart of our relationship with Jesus. This is how we begin to conform our will to his, how we begin to tune into what the Holy Spirit is saying as we walk daily by praying to the Lord and listening to him as we read scripture. Number three, participate in Christian fellowship and worship. If we're going to be followers of Christ, then we need to surround ourselves with his people. Because when we pray and when we read scripture, we sometimes may not hear clearly, but the people who are walking with us can help us refine what we're hearing Sometimes the Holy Spirit can speak to us through the people that are around us. You want to make sure that those are people who are walking with the Lord too so that they can help you know what Christ wants you to do. And lastly, listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit and how He is leading you to live as He's telling you what to do. Things like forgive. Forgive people who have wronged you. Not because they deserve it, but because we are called as Christians to forgive just as Christ forgave us. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Be honest and live an ethical life. Be a witness that's telling others about what Christ is doing in your life. And serve. God gives each and every one of us a special gift that we can use in his kingdom to do to help build his his kingdom what is god given to you and how are you using it to serve according to the ways the holy spirit is calling you to serve let us pray together Lord, we thank you for this message of Christ, why it may trouble our hearts. It gives us a chance to respond now while we have time to change the direction of our life. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to each and every person that is here right now. If we are walking on the wrong path, we would turn from that path and turn to Christ. Lord, wake us up if we have been asleep. Show us what we need to do. Father, speak to us through your Holy Spirit so that we can know you and Christ will know us as we serve alongside him doing the things that he calls us to do. Father God, help us to walk daily taking our relationship with Christ seriously as the most important thing in our life. Father, help us not to miss out on this brief opportunity that you have given us to come back to you. For we are weary and we carry heavy burdens, and yet Christ calls us to come to him because his yoke is light and his way of life is easy. Lord, help us to hear his call and to answer. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.